Vault 21. One of the few vaults that is not only still functioning, but its residents were not killed by some shifty Vault Tech witchery. It is also the last vault to cover before Fallout 4 comes out, and my family submit a missing persons report. Located inside the New Vegas Strip, it now stands as a casino and hotel that any and all can gain accommodation to, sleep, or lose all their money inside. Of course, there is more to the story of this vault than meets the eye, but then again, that's why you're here, isn't it? So the inside foyer area is unusual in that it's unclear if this was the original access point to the vault or not. The actual door to the vault is mounted on the sign outside, so it's likely that this was constructed after the bombs fell, though more on how that happened later. This means a structure different to this one must have existed at one point in this spot, as there isn't anywhere else where the door could have been removed from. One of the first things we can do is take a look at one of the two terminals found here to give us some information on the vault, its history and some of the services that it provides. First of all is a dinner menu, with what I assume is the gourmet equivalent of food to be found in New Vegas. Each one is accompanied with a cheeky joke, although I don't really agree with the Cazador one. Would rather get back at them by causing them great bodily harm to be honest. Next up is the gift catalogue, detailing some of the shit that one can purchase in this vault. The vault jumpsuits become relevant later as you're asked to procure some for a quest, as they are completely sold out. Also, that comment about people not being able to read is just in poor taste in my opinion. People don't need to be reminded how illiterate they are by a terminal entry that they can't read. Lastly is the convenience that is afforded to people, but it's mostly generic hotel services. Now onto the history of the place. It's called a paradise for equality, and this whole idea is based around the gambling angle that the vault had. That it was based so closely to Las Vegas is not a mistake, though whether it was only gamblers permitted to enter or not is unknown. Also, this was written after this vault was opened, not before. It goes on to say about how everyone in the vault was given the same start and conditions, and how their skill would decide how far they would go, even down to having the same rooms and the gambling places being in the open, presumably so that when some salty get lost, they didn't pull the oil, I was cheated card. All the disagreements were settled with gambling. The whole purpose seems to have been to see how well people functioned when pure skill was the only advantage any individual possess over one another. Then of course Mr. House came along and ruined it all. The next entry goes into detail about the integration of Vault 21 into New Vegas. At first they feared the world of Fallout, as several vaults throughout the series have been reluctant to open their doors to the new world, usually out of fear of what has become. And to be fair, that fear is completely warranted. The waste is fucking madness. So a few within the vault wanted to leave. Because of this difference of opinion, everything was settled how it always was in this vault. With gambling. A group represented house and after a long match of blackjack won the game. It is noted later in this vault that some cheating is suspected, but these terminals make no mention of that. Then they opened vault 21 to the world. It then goes on to say how House rebuilt New Vegas into a paradise. Now considering the living conditions in the vault would have been higher than outside at this point, this is a weird thing to say, as most of it was still a shambles. The part at the bottom interests me though, it became a great source of materials with which to rebuild New Vegas. This is definitely one of the main, if not the main, reason why House wanted access to Vault 21. It would provide him with some of the most advanced technology that was available in the pre-war world, and even now allowing him to push his schedule forward quite a bit, as I would have no doubt it would take longer to rebuild it all without the materials found inside this vault. It then goes on to say how he filled everything bar the top half with concrete. Now I have a pretty good idea why he did this. It would allow him to be the only person with pre-war vault technology, and anything they didn't need or couldn't take would not be accessible to outsiders, or the people of Vault 21, should they choose to rebel. We can talk to the current custodian of the vault to get more information on the vault's history and what is happening now. Also flirt with her. Good to see you again. All right, we have an available room for you. That'll be just 20 caps. Well, sure, you seem pretty special, but that'll be our secret, okay? Go all the way down to the vault's main game room. Take the hallway to your left and then the first room on the left-hand side. Enjoy your stay. 
have all sorts of things. Vault souvenirs, vault wares, vault machines, vault mementos, and vault suits. And, well, lots of other vault things, too. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I got these great lunch boxes. They're super. What else? Oh, oh, look at these toasters. You like toast, right? If they're crunchy, even better. What about a vintage Vault-Tec toy car? Or... Okay, I do, but who wants a lame sensor module or a nitrogen canister anyway? All the popular stuff has been sold, especially the Vault suits. I need to find more because people buy them like hotcakes. Leather suits are good times. Thinking about that just blows my top. Really? Well, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Ha ha ha. Okay, why don't you help me out? And in the meantime, I'll think about where to take advantage of your skills. Hey, who says I can't fix that? You bring me those boom suits too, okay? Oh, that makes me so happy. You are too much. Good to see you again. No, oh, silly. Of course it wasn't always a hotel. I grew up in it. I love it. My favorite place in the world. Not that I know much of the world. I never left this place, come to think of it. But it is the most special vault ever. My vault is pure New Vegas. Everyone has a chance, and Lady Luck smiles if you play your odds right. Okay, it was like that before we had to leave. Vault 21 had very smart ways to help people get along. All arguments and fights got solved through gambling. I'll give you a quick tour of my home. Oh yeah, if you like. All right. Sure I have. I made the scene in the strip. It's just that I really like it here. Vault 21 is a kick. Okay, you're right. I hate going outside. It's almost impossible for me to step out of here. Still, I love my vault. It's my pad. No, silly. Of course it wasn't always a hotel. Mr. House has everything to do with Vault 21. He tried to get us out before he filled it with concrete. I almost went ape. So we convinced him. Okay, Sheldon and I, right? We convinced him to leave the top level mostly intact. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want anybody sneaking around down there. My vault runs deep and wide. It's filled with corridors and rooms that go far. What gives him the right to screw us with the royal shaft anyway? So he saved New Vegas. Woohoo! Now scram and let us go on with our lives. Sheesh. I see. Okay, your move. Yeah, and you gotta dig what I did with it. Looking as good as it should? Almost. It was bustling with activity. We all knew each other so well. You see, the vault kept us all even. It's all symmetry and windows down there. We solved any quarrels through gambling. Lady Luck cast no eyeballs, you know? So, nobody shafted anyone else. Yeah. I miss those days. Mitch? You mean Molebutt? I hadn't thought about that name in a long time. I was just a child and he had a big mole in his rear bumper. You understand, kids and all that. Everyone knows about each other in a vault. There's no other way. I hope Mole, I mean, Mitch, is doing well. Yeah, I miss those days. Sure, the place is packed, usually. We get loads of NCR cubes these days, a stray Brahmin Baron once in a while, and recently circled couples shining big rocks on their fingers. Well, it is my vault, all right. I mean, yeah, that is, no. I take care of it, but I suppose you could say that it belongs to Mr. House. 
So first of all, we learn that she is talking through her hole, and there are no vault suits to buy from here. She asks you to go collect some, but whether you do or not is up to you. She goes on to tell us that Vault 21 was not always a hotel, as the terminals have revealed, and it does seem to embody the spirit of New Vegas, where everyone has a chance to get stabbed. She also seems to have a slight case of agoraphobia, as she seems to dislike leaving Vault 21. It also appears likely that the terminals lied. Shocker! House seemed to want to throw everyone out of the vault completely, most likely for the reasons that I discussed. She seems to resent him over filling the place in with concrete, though to be fair, it was a dick move. She also knows Doc Mitchell, who was among the people who left Vault 21, hence the reason he provided us with a vault suit from it. Now we can have a wee look at the layout of the vault itself. Before entering the main part of the vault, we pass through the area that contains the control apparatus for the vault, and it is here that we learn how House made sure he had control, but we'll take a look at that later. The main atrium area of the vault is usually dotted with many people, and a large blackjack table, presumably the one in which the game was played with House, lies in the middle. The rooms of the vault are interesting as they all follow the same design, both in the bedroom and bathroom, which mirrors what was said about symmetry inside the vault. Sarah's room is interesting for a few reasons. The strip snow globe can be found in the bedside table, and a terminal is present here as well. The terminal contains some messages that we will look at later, and bar her terminal in her office, is the only one that contains these messages. Now for the oddest thing, the frame photo of Catherine and James, the parents of the Lone Wanderer. This probably confused people quite a bit as the implications of this picture are quite far reaching, however I believe this is just an easter egg, partly because there is no same way this picture could be here, and partly because theorising who could have brought it here is a whole nother video onto itself. Several parts of the vault show their aftermath of house filling up the bottom floors with concrete, though many parts do not seem to be solid. I think it's more likely the concrete was used to block the lower floors off, and that, bar the entrances to them, there is no more concrete. Besides being overkill, it's both impractical and unlikely. Blocking off just the entrances achieves the same effect, making the rest of the vault inaccessible to anyone else. It's unlikely, as the volume of concrete that would be needed to cover every inch of a vault is enormous. Would he have been able to get it? Maybe. Would it have made sense? No. Besides the waste and resources moving it all here and filling the vault, if he needed to get back in later, he would be up shit creek. Some doors are also inaccessible, suggesting that they were simply locked to keep people out, which would have worked just as well. Some collapsed areas of the vault are also present. It looks like either part of the roof came in or it was just filled with dirt. This might mean that House did not even have enough concrete for more than a few rooms, and either collapsed some sections or just filled it in with rubble to keep people out. Now we can see how he actually made sure that the vault would remain under his control, and that the residents, if they changed their minds, could not take back the vault. In the first room you enter in the vault, if you head up the stairs and across a walkway, you will come to a room filled with more advanced computer equipment than any we have seen thus far in this vault, most likely because it was all taken. We must look at the terminals to see what House did. He overrid the security, life support and vault access control for Vault 21 from his mainframe so that they could no longer control it. This seems quite dark to me for a few reasons. The vault access is irrelevant now that the vault door is gone. However, the security doors could be locked down using the security measures. The residents could then be taken out by disabling the life support systems, eliminating the need for weapons or manpower ever getting involved. If this is the case, it's fucked up, but I'm impressed. A few more things to touch on. You can buy a room here as we saw in the dialogue, but you are boot out after 24 hours, hence the reason it is so cheap. If we go back to Sarah's room, we can read some of the messages on her terminal between her and her brother, Sheldon Wentrop. So overall, it's the overly dramatic crap you expect a poet or a sap to put in a clingy letter, or a Tumblr post, but it roughly translates as follows. He, like Sarah, has agoraphobia, and does not like being outside the vault, as he complains about the warehouse he works in. He then goes on about how bleak life is, and that he may venture into the strip one day to see her. So I'm going to give you some context here. He makes neon signs, and he literally works in the building next door. Just to give you an idea of how badly he does not want to go outside. The next entry is lovely praise from some important woman about how great a time she had in Vault 21, except the entire message is extremely patronising and has an error about it. An error that says, I slummed it in a vault, and I'm not the same as everyone else, but not really, as I made it out alive. She goes on to say that she will recommend it to all her friends. Lastly, 
Her husband seems to have found the most polite way of calling someone's merchandise filthy. So good on him. Her reply to her brother states that the business is going well and then includes some very interesting lines about trust involving House and the NCR. Now it never amounts to anything, but the way she phrases it suggests that she would have sided with the NCR over House, should they have come to blows. She then states that she is still worried that he will one day turn against the residents of Vault 21 and try and put them out of the vault for good. We also get the first mention that suspicions were had over his match against them to decide the fate of Vault 21. Well, that's it. An interesting vault that's goal was to actually make things fair for its residents, allowing matters to be settled exclusively through gambling. The vault lasted for over two centuries, until House wanted in. A group of representatives challenged the rest of the vault to a game of blackjack and won. Though there appears to be some talk of cheating having occurred, he then stripped the vault burr and sealed off all but the top floor with concrete. He also appears to have taken over all the essential systems in the vault so that he can turn them against the residents should they rebel. The vault is now a hotel and is resided over by Sarah Wentrop, with her brother Sheldon working next door, both not visiting the other due to the 20 meters they would have to walk to do so. All in all, it's not a bad vault. In fact, it's one of the rare ones that completed its experiment and managed to do so without killing every single person inside. Good job, vault -Tec. You didn't arse it up. For once. One of the few vaults that actually got it right. And the last one that we will look at before Fallout 4 comes out. If you enjoyed my look into it and want to see more of my content, check out my playlist to see if there are any more questions on Fallout that you have, and I may have answered. Any support in spreading the word of this channel is greatly appreciated, as Fallout 4 is just around the corner. Like, it's literally about two weeks. I'm so fucking hyped. If you do want to support me and get regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions or feedback for the episode should be left either in the comments below or on my subreddit, which is linked in the description. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular channel updates, and to talk to me or have a wee chat. If you want to get in contact with me regarding business, email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you did enjoy this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.